In this podcast, we discuss Borough's goal of straw against Coventry, look ahead to the second leg and answer your podcast questions. This is the Borough Breakdown podcast and this is all your Borough Match Day chatter in a pod. Support. Curtis Fleming is there on the edge of the air. Fleming for Craig Hignett. Hit it, Higgy. Higgy hits the track. Avanelli coming alive again. Janino wants the ball played to him. Avanelli spots out. Hello and welcome back to the Borough Breakdown podcast with Dana Tom plus our guest. We poached him from his own channel, graphic designer extraordinaire and YouTuber. Matt joins us for our playoff pods. So Borough and Coventry can't be separated once again and it's finally poised going into Wednesday night's second leg. Guys, you're both really nervous going into this game. How are you feeling on the other side of it? Tom, do you want to get us started? How are you feeling after that? Still nervous. Um, <laughs> uh, really kind of dreading that 90 minutes, hopefully just 90 minutes on uh, on Wednesday night. I think going into this, you know, we, we've seen Borough play Coventry twice already this season. And both times for me, there was very little between both teams. Obviously, there was different context in both of them. The, the the away game at Coventry, uh, obviously me and you both went to. Uh, then personally, I didn't think they were that good on that day. Um, that you know they were were bottom by um, by virtue of not playing any any home yeah. games at that point. But we we were still in that stage under Wilder where uh, you know the underlying numbers were still there and uh, and and stuff like that. It's just we didn't play well. Neither did they on that day. And then end of the season, I thought both teams played well. Both teams played well today. So now we're going into Wednesday, and I'm just thinking, what is it going to take to to separate them? Um, you know, hopefully we can we can pull out a you know trademark Borough home performance from from under Carrick this season. But yeah, it's uh, be, because of how close it's been this season. There's nothing kind of given me. Um, that boost of confidence where it's like, oh, we battered these at home, so we'll be fine in the second leg. Matt, welcome to the Borough Breakdown podcast, first and foremost. Thank you. Secondly, how are you feeling after that game? I'm feeling really relieved, actually. Um, I was a bag of nerves, like you said, before the pod, uh, before the pod, before the game. I'm bagging as before the pod as well. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm really relieved and actually confident now going into the second leg. I think it's it's hard to read into both games against Coventry this season. I mean, the first one when we lost, it was Wilder's last game. We were in complete disarray at that point. And then final day, you could argue Borough weren't quite needing to be in top gear. Nothing was riding on it. So it's hard to really read into both games from the regular season. But I think our home form gives me confidence. I think we've only lost once under Carrick at home, which was Burnley. I don't think we've had a, a game at home where we've not scored under Carrick. So mm, I'm, right, um, yeah. I'm, I'm weirdly, my emotions couldn't be any different from before the game to after it. I was a bag of nerves before. I'm actually really proud and relieved by how we played. And I feel like it's not ours to lose uh, on Wednesday. I've got to give Coventry more respect than that. But I certainly am confident Borough can use our home advantage and, and get over the line, hopefully in 90 minutes. And like mm. Tom said, not. Not any longer, not 120, and God forbid, not penalties. Deary me. Oh, God, yeah. Honestly, if that happens, I'm out. Like, I like penalties as a neutral, and I'm all for penalties when, like, you know, Borough aren't involved. But if Borough are involved, my God, just no. Can we not do that, please, Borough? Please, just don't. Just don't. Just get it sorted. And to be honest, for both sides, it's such a cruel way to lose a football match. So I think both sets of fans are probably not wanting penalties. But I was quite excited coming in this game. I wasn't nervous because I tweeted about it before the game. For me, being in this position is more than what I ever expected in the reverse fixture. And I appreciate that was quite early on this season. But also when Carrick was appointed, I like my, the expectations were on the floor. I didn't know too much about what he was going to offer us. And just to see how we've had this massive improvement to be in the position where we are now, 
it's just fantastic. So I'm just enjoying it. And ever since that really embarrassing and quite pathetic performance against Villa in the playoffs, the last time that we were in this sort of situation, <laughs> which I, I wish that I could erase that from my memory, but it was that bad that it sticks. I've just wanted a redemption from that and from 2015, of course. I've got my 2015 shirt on um, for a reason. But yeah, we've obviously Johnny isn't on this podcast. He's in sunny Spain, he says, although it wasn't actually that sunny. So he said to us earlier, it was actually raining. But we uh, dialed in with him to get his thoughts on the game just before we get into our own. Hello, guys. John here from a slightly sunny Spain. Um, just watched Borough's uh, nil-nil draw against Coventry at the CBS. And what did I think of the performance? I thought it was near enough perfect. Um, bar the, the Akpom chance where I thought he was just going to dink it over the keeper. Um, but it was a really good save in the end. Uh, but in terms of that, if we took that chance, it would have been a perfect performance. But I think overall we were really, really good today. You know, really solid. Uh, Hackney, Mauer, McNair and Lenahan. That quadrant uh, of players was, was really strong. I think you need that strong base when you are playing against a side who likes to play in the centre of the pitch and try and get loads of bodies in there and make, make you cause pro- and have problems. Like, I think they get the most out of their attacks if you create an error in that central area because they're able to turn it over quite quickly and get you in, uh, in, in behind with Jokerez. But we snuffed them out and it was really good. Not to, not to give them a shot on target is a big, big win. Uh, for us, especially as a defensive unit. We haven't really seen this side of Borough yet under Matt Carrick, but I think it's a really good time to start showing that we can be a solid defensive unit, play good football, be on the front foot and create plenty of chances. Uh, we didn't really create as much today, but I think that was part of the plan in turn, or the overall plan of let's keep it solid today, let's just try and get through the second leg without any, any injuries, no deficits or anything like that. And I think we're going to have a really good platform to build on on Wednesday night. And I think what's really important is the atmosphere. You know, if, if Borough are able to create an like atmosphere like they were against Tottenham or those European nights or whatever, like a really tense atmosphere, we could do something really good and something special on Wednesday night. But hopefully we get on the front foot, don't really leave the space, which I think Coventry are probably expecting us to have, still have that solid defensive line, create the chances, use the long balls well. And I think we will get something on Wednesday night and hopefully we'll be on Wembley where again but guys uh have a great podcast uh matt welcome uh, ho- have a great first episode as well and um, up the borough breakdown cheers guys so near enough perfect johnny said uh matt what did you think of the performance at the cbs um i was very happy with it um especially defensively i think there was a lot talked about beforehand about and i think johnny might have said it himself about the first 20 minutes half an hour Getting through that, I think that was probably what I was more nervous for, just seeing how we settled into the game. And I thought we were fantastic in that first 20 minutes. It wasn't even like we were sort of hanging on in any sort of way. We, we took control rather quickly. Um, and if anything, we looked the less nervous of the two sides, um, quieting their crowd down straight away and just looked like we were on it. And I think there was a, a couple of question marks on could Borra, you know, turn it on. Uh, once the playoff started, was there any truth into the idea that we had st- took our foot off in the three remaining games of the season? And I think we've proved that, you know, now that it is playoffs, now it's the serious business. We were able to, to turn it on. Of course, we weren't at our blistering best, but I, I, I think Johnny made a good point there that <clears throat> I don't think we necessarily wanted to be going forward. I think as much as Carrick said before the game, we've got a winning mentality. We want to win the game. I think that's true. We probably did. Of course we did. But there was definitely, I think, an, uh, an idea to keep it tight and be solid at the back. And I couldn't be any more impressed by our defence, especially we were just so composed, like they were throwing long balls forward. Then Ahan McNair could have quite easily panicked, sliced it, headed it out for a throw-in or whatever. They chested it, took it down, played it in the midfield. And we just kept rebuilding and starting again. So I was really, really proud of how we managed the occasion. And it gives me confidence going forward that if the stakes do raise, we'll be able to handle it. So very happy. Would you uh, agree with that, Tom? Matt mentioned pride there in in Borough's performance at the CBS because it it was a difficult game for us. We could have easily played on the front foot in the way that we usually do and they could have easily picked us off. They're a very good counter-attack inside, as are we. But what did you make of that performance? Yeah, I was a bit nervous going into it kind of 
to see what the impact of momentum might be. We haven't had it recently, whereas they have. And I, th I think even though we haven't had it recently, there have been positive signs in all of our performances. It's not like we've gone absolutely drastically downhill and got battered every game. You know, Luton, arguably, we could have drawn or won because they're you know, last goal shouldn't have counted. Uh, <laughs> was never a penalty. Um, you know, Rob, Rotherham heavily affected by uh, Blindy. Can't remember his name. We'll go Blindy. <laughs> he's um, he's <laughs> Blindy. Um, so go, going into it, like we, we didn't have the momentum in terms of results. Um, so I was interested to see how that was going to play out. You know, Coventry did have the momentum, but we looked still the you know the same as as we have done some of the some of the play out from the back today um mm. you know un, under pressure as well you had like lenahan and megan people to play a ball like <laughs> alex Mort and stuff like that like <laughs> what, what's going on here like what, i mean heart was was racing i wasn't wearing my fitbit at the time so i can't monitor like where, where it was at times <laughs> oh, during God, the please game. please wear it on wednesday Oh well, me, me, I was sat with my uncle. He had he was like 120 when Stefan was playing out from the back. It was, <laughs> it was mad, of course. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I thought we we handled the occasion really well, as as Matt said, and you know we've we've done near perfectly, as as Johnny said to to get a nil nil draw back to the Riverside. Um, you know, obviously it does favour us now. Even Mark Robbins has come out and said, oh. You know, it favours us, says we're the favourites for the playoffs. Don't know if he's playing mind games there. It feels very <laughs> eye talk ranked from him. But mm. um, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting one on Wednesday. But in terms of performance today, don't think it, you know, it, it couldn't have been much better barring, you know, us actually scoring. Yeah, it was quite tense and, and cagey at times, which I guess for a first leg of a playoff game is to be expected. But I probably didn't want to impose themselves too much attacking wise because as I said they're so easy well they're so it's so easy for them to pick other teams off they've got some fantastic pressing players like Jokerez like Hamer even when they brought Jamie Allen on he's a very very good player as well in terms of that midfield engine and I think that game earlier was all about Borough's, uh, Borough's defensive solidity, which is very different to what we've seen under Michael Carrick. We don't tend to keep clean sheets. We don't tend to be solid defensively. And that was a really big tick in the box of another way that, that Borough can play. And it was essentially a game where the, the approach might have been, or Carrick might have said the approach, was that they tried to win the game. But it was more importantly about not losing it and Bora didn't lose it, and they've given themselves a fantastic platform to go back to the Riverside and to win, because as Matt said, only one team in the league have beaten Bora at home under Michael Carrick, twice in all competitions, obviously Brighton, but we could probably discard that because they're a Premier League team, but that was all about our defensive uh, solidity, and I really want to praise the, the, the team as a whole with that, because their concentration levels would have been really tested during that game. Their the setup, the shape, the concentration of players. When you've got somebody like Victor Jokerez carrying the ball and, and trying to get him behind and trying to move pieces of the uh, of the chess game out, and, and and that was what it was in the end. I think a little bit of a of a chess game. Somebody that really really stood out in that match and deservedly got a lot of praise during it and after it was Paddy McNair. I really want to give McNair his own segment here because Tom he was. Absolutely excellent, was he? Up against the very, very good striker, Victor Jokerez. Yeah, I don't think I'm over exaggerating in saying that that is the best I've ever seen uh, Paddy McNair play at, at centre back because it just looked like he'd gone out there with one job to keep Jokerez quiet. It, it reminded me a lot of um, Daniel Fisher against Norwich a couple of years <laughs> yeah. ago, where it's just like, just Mark can't will. Uh, but like, even like some of the. Um, some of the challenges he was going in with the aggressiveness, it was timed perfectly every time, but you could see he was getting into Gyoka as a Z as well, which was, was quite mm. funny. Um, the Sky commentators had, had touched on it before the game, saying Gyoka Rez loves moaning at people. And then, yeah, he, he was just moaning all the time when, when was, uh, <laughs> was was getting the better of him. It was um, it was quite good to watch and, uh, you know, it, it's 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 always enjoyable to see. I think anyone who has ever played like seven aside has that that guy who always loses his head 
on the other team and <laughs> you, know, you can keep making him miss and stuff like that. It just gets worse and worse and more funny. So, yeah, I, I, that was very reminiscent of what McNair was doing today. But, you know, 10 out of 10 job from him to... You know, lose half a tooth as well in in the in the battle. Um, yeah, yeah. Perfectly timed. There. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, he, 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 to be honest, Paddy McNair has gone through the wars this season. Obviously, he had that mask on. I think he broke his nose, didn't he? And now he's got half his tooth probably just stuck in the turf at the CBS. I mean, the beauty of football is that he was absolutely fantastic. He really was. And and all of the criticisms that he has got in recent weeks just absolutely blown out of the, the water because he was absolutely fantastic. York Reds won only three of his 11 uh, ground duels, which is testament to not only McNair, but that Borough defence as well. McNair himself um, won four of his five ground duels and both of his aerial duels in that game. So honestly, he was he was fantastic. Do, would, you, would you agree, Matt? I assume that everyone would agree with that, that Paddy McNair was pretty much the player of the match yeah I was delighted for him because he's coming for a, a lot of stick I think a lot of it unfairly I think he's maybe become a bit of a scapegoat recently um mm. yeah he's, he's made mistakes he's not being his best and yeah he's probably not better suited to being one of a back two in the center of defense but there was signs I think in the final day against up against Jokerez that he was maybe getting a grip of what he needed to do up against him but Today he was on a different level. I mean, I think it's it's maybe easy as a centre back to back down to Jokeres, maybe let him get the better of you, and you know he, he could quite easily get in the upper hand. But he just, like you say, he got into his head, made him more frustrated, um, and he won the battle. He, he essentially won the battle, and every time they tried playing the ball up to Jokeres, he was on him on his back, put some really hard tackles in, and um, hopefully he can he can do the same again in the home leg. I think. Too early to say he's got Jokerez's number, but he's <laughs> he's um, he's done exceptionally well, and I'm just really happy for him because he's he's not a central defender by trade, really. So for him to you know step into a back two up against the best number nine, if that comes <laughs> a number ten, um, we'll we'll call him the best number nine. Um, for him to go up against the best number nine in the league and perform like he did is quite something. So I'm I'm just really happy for him. I think more than anything, but he was. He was probably one of my two players of the match, I think I'd say. Yeah, I think, to be honest, that game as a whole won't have been particularly good of a watch for a neutral, but that battle between them two was fascinating. And there was a shot, a classic Sky Sports slow-mo at the end where they would just embrace each other, uh, McNair and Jokerez. I think there was that mutual respect that that was a really, really good battle between the two of them. But sticking to the with the defensive theme, Matt, that was only Borough's seventh clean sheet in 32 games under Michael Carrick. Obviously, that's not been our strong suit. But how impressed were you with Borough's overall defensive display uh, against Coventry? Very. I think, um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's the way we play. It maybe gives the narrative that we're not a very good team defensively. I think definitely we do shoot ourselves in the foot sometimes with some really bad individual errors. Huddersfield comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, even as recently as, as the, the final game against Coventry, I think Harmer's goal came from Tommy Smith trying to play the same ball twice. Um, <laughs> yeah. It didn't come off either time, but um yeah, maybe it is a case that maybe the narrative is that we're not as good defensively uh, just due to the way we play. But I think we showed today that when necessary, we can do it. And um, it's probably the best I've seen us defensively for a long time. Maybe ever under Michael Carrick, to be honest. But I think yeah. a lot of that maybe comes down to Carrick's um, demeanour. I mean, he's he's just such a calming influence. I don't think there's anyone I would rather have in a dressing room in a occasion like that than Michael Carrick. He, he kept them unbelievably calm. And I think he showed that we can we can be really solid at the back. And um, it wasn't just the back the back four. I think the shape across the whole team was absolutely brilliant. So it bodes well for the rest of the playoffs. And it's good to see us put in a performance. I know everyone likes to see goals and swaps buckling games where we blow teams away. But I think in a game like this where we needed to come away with something, it was really satisfying to see Borough you know, be as solid as we were at the back. Yeah, it's knock on, knockout football, is there? I think as long as you've got that solid base at the back... We don't really need to be at our swashbuckling best. As I mentioned on last week's pod, we just need to be good enough to get through the semis. And then Wembley, the final, is a completely different game in itself. So, yeah, it was a, it was just really, really good to see Borough just 
perform really fantastically defensively each and every one of them the whole team and individually as well were fantastic just dealt with that game really well and actually in terms of our game management I don't know if anybody picked this up but there were times where Coventry were getting free kicks and there would just be a very very low-key kick the ball away from it was usually from Smith I, I know, is it? And I just think little things like that, just to slow the game down. Bora did really well with their game management. Zach Steffen was annoying the <laughs> commentary fans a little bit. With him, but sometimes that's just what you're going to have to do to get through these games. And other teams will probably do the same, so why not join them? Um, but Tom, on the flip side, do you think Bora should have scored in that game? Akpom had two chances, one in the first half. It was a fantastic save from Ben Wilson, but then at the start of the second half, he, he flashed a, a head of wide as well. Do you think Bora could have maybe scored in that game? We could have maybe scored. I'm not going to go all out and say we should have scored. Um, I've got to give Ben Wilson a lot of credit for the save in the in the first half. Um, I think as as a goalkeeper, that's all you can really do there is make yourself big and hope it back takes the deflection off your hip and over the bar in, in that scenario, which obviously it did. Maybe Akpom could have tried to just loft it a little bit, but who I thought knows? he was gonna dink it. Yeah. I thought he would have dinked it. Who who knows how that would have would have gone, um, you know, in, in a different timeline. So yeah, we, we could have scored that. Great effort by the goalkeeper and then Maybe just snatched it a bit in the second half for that header past the post. I would say Jones also had a, a good opportunity as well, um, which maybe the choice of shot was wrong there. If you may, like, I, I don't know. I just think running in at that angle, if you just try and toe poke it towards the the corner in like a straight line, that might have been a bet, better option than than the shot that he chose. But yeah, it, it did seem for for all the. You know, they they had more shots than us, but none of them were on target. And then we had a few which which were we just had to to make them count and, and be more clinical there. But we were up against you know based on clean sheets, one of the best goalkeepers in in the division. So it was it's always going to be difficult for us. You know, I think going into the game, everyone was talking about Akpom and Gokarez and the the comparison <laughs> there, but. Looking at the looking at the stats for for Ben Wilson, just think that that's where the the game is going to be. I don't want to say won and lost there, but it, it's going to be very difficult to break him down and and, and get a goal there. Yeah, the best goalkeeper in the championship. Twenty one clean sheets now, uh, twenty in the league. Obviously, that that was his twenty first. Uh, Tom. Matt even. Uh, Zai Jones had a, a big chance as well. Obviously, he scored it, but was flagged offside. Um, in our preview, Raj said the space behind the fullbacks could be an area for Borough to exploit. Obviously, bid well on one side, not Coffee on the other. Could that be an area that Borough tried to target a little bit more in the in the home leg and try to hit Coventry in behind, you think? I think it's definitely an avenue. I think we tried to play a couple of balls over the top, didn't we, that, that didn't quite Pull, pull off. I think there was definitely something we were trying. Archer made, I don't know how many runs in behind and the balls were just a little bit too, uh, just a little bit too hard for him. So mm. it wouldn't surprise me. I think it's always going to be hard playing in front of Coventry's defence to get, to get really in behind them. I think we've got to try and, and stretch them, but it depends how they sit up in the away leg as well. I mean, I don't know if they're going to change tact a little bit, sit a bit deeper, soak up the pressure, just try and make the, the second leg prolong as long as they possibly can. I think Coventry's nightmare would be if Borough scored early. So I don't know if they'll try and maybe sit a bit deeper, really, really pack out their sort of defensive third. But it's probably one of the better ways that Borough are going to get in behind their defence. And I think on another day, if Jones's run's timed a little bit better, one of them balls over the top to Archer aren't as heavy. We could have got in behind a few times. So it wouldn't surprise me if Borough had tried that again. It just depends on if Robbins tweaks Coventry's defence and maybe gets them to sit back an extra 10 yards. Um, it depends how brave he wants to be. But yeah, hopefully that's that's something Borough try and exploit in the second leg. Yeah, I felt a little bit sorry for Archer because he wasn't that involved in the game, but he was obviously trying to latch onto those balls that were just over hit. And it was a theme of both sides. Both sides seemed to 
one to opt to go in behind and there were a few Coventry long balls that were just wayward and you could see Victor Yoko is getting frustrated. It was, uh, and to take a phrase that, that Raj mentioned in our preview, a bit of a cat and mouse game and who blinks first and I don't think any of you really wanted to blink first to be honest and KG probably the best way to describe that game as well. Felt a little bit like neither side wanted to fully impose their game plan, but they're going to have to in the second leg because it's the final chance to really send yourself into Wembley. But who do you think will be the happier of the of the two sides going into that second leg on Wednesday, Tom? So mute myself. Um, <laughs> I, f- I think a lot of the... A, a lot of the um, talk around that second leg would indicate that it's going to be Borough who uh, are more happy with that. I'd personally go the other direction, say it'd be Coventry. Um, you know, they've, they've still they haven't you know lost or, or anything like that in, in the home game, and then they could. I mean, it, it depends on which they believe in themselves. They could try and go all out and get like a you know one goal away win. Uh, in the second leg, or they could play for penalties or, or extra time and, and stuff. So I, I can see why they might be the happier of the two. And, you know, I, I, I've seen some um, uh, little bits of frustration that we didn't manage to score, not a lot like, but yeah, I, I think most of the most of the talk around it would, would indicate that, that it would be Borough, but I think there's positives for, for both of them, really. And, you know, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if Coventry are looking at that thinking, you know, we could go and nick something in the, in the away leg. Matt, who do you think will be the, the happy of the two sides going into that game on Wednesday? I'd say Borough. I think Tom's made a, good, a couple of good points there, though. Um, Sky's pundits seem to be absolutely over the moon that Co- it was all Coventry, the perfect game for Coventry, which I didn't, I didn't quite agree with. I think... They'll definitely be happy because they're still in a tie at the end of the day. Um, so they'll be happy with that because Borough are favourites, I guess. But I don't think you can look past Borough's home advantage. And I think if I was a Coventry fan, I'd think that they'd maybe missed an opportunity to not take at least a narrow lead into the second leg, like even a one-goal lead. So I think Tom's right. There's There's definitely positives both sides can take, but... Coventry have got to come up here and do something that, like you say, not many teams have done at all. It's it's going to be one hell of a task for them. And if they can beat Borough at the Riverside, then they undoubtedly deserve to to make the playoff final. But I think weighing it up, I think it just about is better for Borough, I'd say, to, to get through that away leg. It, it could have went horribly wrong for us, as we've seen in away games you know, this season, even when Borough have had that crazy capitulation. We know what, we know what can happen. Um, so I think, yeah, it just about is advantage, Borough, and I think we'll be delighted to to come back to the to start again, really, and, and be at home in front of a sellout. Just to add something else there as well, something I'm a bit kind of wary of going into the second leg, and then I touched on this earlier about both teams are going to have to impose their their game plans in the second leg. Borough are going to have to try and impose theirs on on Wednesday, and from what the stats were showing us, um, you know, right before the game on Sky Sports. Coventry are one of the best counter-attacking teams in the league, so they're going to come here knowing that Borough are going to try and play the way that we do play at home, and potentially that might work well for them as well. So it could kind of play into that, um, you know, what one, one, one goal away win, which hope doesn't happen, obviously, but it's uh, it, it's a possibility. I, I would say it's it's something that that's on my mind, and I'm just kind of <laughs> tell Tom's ner- nervous. nervy about. <laughs> Yeah. It's understandable to be fair. Like all of this playoff anxiety is just it, it's probably the right feeling, isn't it? I feel a little bit broken, a little bit strange that I am not feeling these nerves. But I was thinking after the game, when I was on BBC Tees, I was thinking maybe, just maybe, them being the away side coming to the riverside, it might suit them. I think they'll play very similarly to how they did at the, either the final game of the regular season where they pressed us straight from the off and took the game to us that way very, very early. 
the very early exchanges of the game on Wednesday night is going to be really, really important, I think. But we'll get on to that in a little bit. Uh, before we go into the praise and place, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody that has donated to our Motor Neuron Disease Association fundraiser that we've been running for the past two seasons now. We've just reached £3,000. Matt's lovely graphic is on the screen there if you're watching on YouTube. It's just an absolutely amazing amount of money for such an amazing charity. We are going to leave it running until June, so there is still time to add a few more quid to the pot there for just such an amazing charity in the Motor Neuron Disease Association. So I would like to start the praise of place by putting everyone that donated all 132 people in there. But guys, who gets in your praise of place after uh, this first round of the playoffs? Um, Tom, do you want to hit us first with your mention? Yeah, well, I've got three. Uh, Paddy McNair. Oh, yeah. has... <laughs> got selection box here. <laughs> Paddy McNair obviously has to go in there for, for his performance against uh, Giocarez today. Um, did an outstanding job. And it did, like I say, it did look like that was the, the one thing he was tasked with uh, for the match today. And he's he's done an absolutely 10 out of 10 job. Ryan Giles, as well, I'm going to say, defensively. Uh, I don't think he did too much going forwards today. But I did kind of allude to it on the um, the Coventry opposition preview show the other day that the the battle on that side between him and Norton Coffey was going to be a integral one in in both games, and he did really well to keep Norton Coffey quiet. Um, I, th- I think well, they probably both did it well to keep each other quiet because I can't remember <laughs> either of them really completing the cross into the box. It was uh, you know probably one of the best defensive performances I've seen from from Giles this season. And then lastly, I'm going to go with Daryl Lenahan, Captain Dara. Um, <laughs> did a uh, fantastic job today. Did everything except win me 17 quid off and free bets. Um, <laughs> Didn't get his head Stop on Stop betting. Stop uh, betting it, on it, him, it, he, he, got, he got his head on one, but it didn't go anywhere near the mm. goal. Um, it's, it's all it's waiting for Wednesday. It's, it's, it's meant to happen, happen on Wednesday, point. that's why. But... Um, yeah, I, I thought he did a, a equally as good a job in defence. Didn't have, have to um, go after Gokarez too much. And I don't want to slag Matty Gordon off, but he wasn't that much of a challenge for Daryl Lenahan <laughs> today. Um, so, no. you know, Lenahan in general had time to to kind of really calm everyone down at the back and, and, and play out from the back quite well. Like I said earlier, that, that one where he pretty much made the play, the t- play a five-yard pass to Alex Mort is just like such a show of confidence and playing out from the back. So, yeah, I've, I've got to have uh, Lenahan in prison place as well. I was going to say, I um, I retract my selection box comment there because I actually said three players on the last episode. <laughs> but uh, Matt, who's who's in your present place this week? I guess I, you could say I've got five then. I'm not going to go through them all, but I think the, <laughs> the back four have got to go in there, definitely. But I, mm-hmm. I thought Mowat was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's his best performance in a Borough shirt. I think it's, it's unquestionable. Um. He was just such a calming influence in the midfield. I mean, there were so many times where they'd launch the ball up and, you know, Lenahan and McNair would get their head on it. But then the second ball, the second balls were so important. I mean, if Coventry got on the end of them, second balls were instantly under pressure again and it could be, you know, 4v4, whatever. But Mowat was just in the right place at the right time. His positioning was spot on. So many times he'd nick the ball, he'd just be a calming influence. He'd, you know, move his body into the correct position and he'd just recycle possession and we'd be back in control no panic. Like I said earlier, he's not, you know, shanking it out or anything, trying to play it long in behind. He was just so composed and every decision he made, I think, was was perfect. Um, a bit like a bit of a house and roll. I know there's a lot of clamour for house and to hopefully be fit and be back in, but I think Mowitz really gave me a lot more confidence in him um, after that performance. He was just, yeah, fantastic all, all throughout the midfield. Everything he did, I think, was was amazing, and he was a big part, I think, as to why Borough was was so so much of a calm and collected group uh, in that game. He was great. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned uh, Giles there, Tom, and I completely agree with what you said there, Matt, about uh, Alex Mott. He only misplaced four passes today out of a total of ninety attempted. His eighty six accurate passes were second only to Towson's ninety. Uh, sorry, Hackney's ninety. He was. Exactly that, really calm, composed. There was a moment in the second half where Coventry put us under immense pressure and I was on the edge of my seat thinking, shit. (laughs) And I don't usually feel like that about Borough playing out from the back because I trust them. 
but there was a little bit of nerves there coming in because I thought this is really dangerous, really risky. There's such a good press inside at times when they trigger that really high press, a really aggressive press as well. But Borough, between them, it was probably a bit of the, probably half of the back line and then more as well, were just able to play that out. And we saw it in the, the game on Monday, at the end of the regular season. Borough, when they play out from the back against Coventry's press, it firstly, it looks good. And it puts us immediately on the front foot against them. So if Borough can get that right, if Coventry do push onto us in that second leg, we can work our way around them. And I just thought, uh, and and Rob Fletcher on our Telegram chat mentioned it, that particular moment, I can't remember uh, what minute it was in the second half, but that was absolutely fantastic. And Alex Mott was a big part of that. Giles as well. Giles has come under a lot of criticism for his defending this season. He's obviously a fantastic attacking outlet, but defensively, there are vulnerabilities in his game. And it's quite obvious the way that he plays and the way that Borough plays a team, because we are such a an attack first team defensively, you're going to have those holes there. And Giles epitomises this Middlesbrough team in that way. But defensively, I thought he was excellent against Norton Coffey. Um, and, and this goes back to this conversation about Borough's defence. It was either... Giles was closing down the cross of Norton Cuffey or the cross was coming in and Borough were heading it out. So I thought it was just a spot on performance from, from Borough defensively and also Ryan Giles is definitely in my present place um, as well. So I echo a lot of what, of what you've said there. Uh, but let's move on to questions then. Questions, obviously, your way of asking us things to answer on the podcast. You can get in touch with us and send in your questions on Twitter, Borough underscore breakdown, or email the Borough Breakdown at hotmail.com or our Telegram chat where there's 324 Borough fans exactly talking. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. All things not Borough. In fact, we actually are. We're talking about the players right now. Uh, but Kevin asks us, this t- uh, goes into the, the, the team selection news where Dill Fry was, of course, back, which is a huge, huge boost for Borat, as is Marcus Force, of course. But Kevin asks, will Fry be back and starting next week? McNair has more than earned his spot for the next leg. Tom, Fry back in, or would you keep McNair on that side? Keep McNair. Uh, I think, you know, he's there on merit at the moment. I'd have said the same thing about Fry earlier in the season, or you know, someone else who, who's come in and, and made the most of their their chance. Um, like I said earlier, he's done literally a perfect job on uh, on Gyokaras today, so he just needs to finish it off on on Wednesday. And it's it's strange as well. Usually, this is the type of player that I would be putting Dill Fry in for. I think the the bigger, more physical players, I'd usually think that's a job for Fry. It's not a job for for McNair, but. McNair did such a good job on him today that you know I, I actually wouldn't want Fry going up against Jokeres because I'm like may, maybe maybe we found the right um, antidote to uh, to Jokeres. Maybe it's you know someone a little bit faster in in McNair who can get to to making these challenges and uh, you know winding them up and, and losing teeth. <laughs> Losing teeth. <laughs> oh, that's the new trend, isn't it? It's like planking and the mannequin challenge, but losing teeth. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Matt, would you keep uh, McNair in that side or would you want to see Dale Fry put back in? 100% keep McNair in. I think we'd be stupid to change it. Um, if McNair had struggled, then yeah, maybe you consider it, but he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. The only, the only reason I could think of bringing Fry in is to sure us up as maybe a back five late on in the game. If we're a goal up, coming under a bit of pressure, don't see it often from Carrick, but maybe with the stakes that high, he could bring Fry uh, into a back three with Lenahan and McNair. But for me, yeah, after what we saw today, you'd be, be very silly, I think, to change that back four. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, next question from from Rob. He's getting all the mentions on this podcast. I mentioned him earlier, but Rob Fletcher <laughs> asks, what's the best way we could break down Coventry playing so deep with five or six men behind the ball? For me, and I know we've spoken about set pieces a few times on this podcast, and I still believe that you don't need to be good at set pieces to be a good team, although it definitely helps to be good at set pieces. Our XG from set players 
in that game was zero. Obviously, a lot of our free kicks were going back, which I think was a de- was a deliberate tactic just to keep hold of the ball and to not probably overexert ourselves in that situation. Obviously, what we've spoken about, not overimposing ourselves to get picked off. I just think from set pieces, now is probably the time where you want to see a little bit more of a threat. We did actually change our routine because a lot of our players were on the edge of the box and then they drove in and there was a a ball played by Giles, I think it was, clipped over to the back post. And unfortunately for McNair, he was a little bit dazed because I think he was expecting Callum Doyle to head it out and it eventually cannoned off him and out for a for a goal kick but that for me is an area where in such fine margin games like it was today they can be the difference and yeah maybe we just need that Dara Lenahan goal or something ricochets off someone's ass maybe that's just all we need but I also thought maybe we could have quickened the tempo a little bit and moved the ball around a bit quicker but I just felt in that game, it was so cagey that they didn't want to. And they're going to have to in the game on Wednesday night. So I do expect them to move it a little bit quicker in terms of their passing. Do you guys have have any thoughts on, you know, how Borough can break commentary down? They did have a lot of men behind the ball. They do defend quite deep, which is absolutely fine. You know, it's obviously got them where they are. They're a fantastic team containing others. But... Yeah, Tom, Matt, do you have any thoughts of, of how Borough can potentially break through that very sturdy shape of commentaries? I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been thinking about it and just potential changes we could make. Um, I do think patient build-up play is going to come into it um, quite a bit and just not letting them counter. I did think we had a little bit of success with quick passing on the edge of the box today. Um, and you know, sometimes getting us through in, in the position where we could get a shot off, um, potentially more of that. And then in, in terms of maybe squad changes, um, personally, by about half time onwards, I was wanting force on for Jones. Um, force tends to cut inside a little bit more than than Jones does and is a bit better on his left foot. So I can I can maybe see force being a bit of an asset there, or alternatively, if he is fit, Ramsey. And then have Ramsey and McGree mm. playing that that kind of um, playmaker role on both sides. That could potentially help. But um, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a big job um, for for Carrick and the coaching team to to find a weakness in in Coventry and uh, and help us break them down on on Wednesday. It's that ball over the top that we saw it today. We saw it against Luton as well, where of course Archer scored from it. When you're coming up against a Sonny Bradley against Luton and a Carl McFadgene against Coventry, I feel like that's probably where we can maybe hit them. And also, as we've spoken about earlier, in behind the wing backs as well, when they push on, if they do, if they commit themselves, it's about can you release that ball really quickly out wide? Because there were a few more times, much like the game at the end of the, the regular season where Giles was free and he probably could have been you could receive the ball from that big switch. So I think that big switch is really important. Set pieces are really important as well for both sides. And also just maybe quickening the tempo a little bit when we can. We did do our times. I just didn't think we did it enough in that game, but it's going to be absolutely fascinating because tactically, I think it was an intriguing battle today. So I think it's going to be much the same uh, on Wednesday night. But looking ahead to that game at the Riverside, Tom, how do you think Mark Robbins will set his Coventry side up for that game? I, f- I feel like very similarly. Um, I, I, f- I think they had the the plan today, um, which obviously didn't pay off for them in terms of getting it up to Giocares and to a much lesser, lesser extent, Matty Godden. But um, yeah, I, I, f- I think defensively it will be look very similar. Um, I, th- I think going to the Riverside, they're going to look to to try and be more solid and, and play on the counter-attack. So I, f- I think they'll they'll go for that. It's just I, I can't see them trying the same thing in terms of the long balls up, up top for uh, for Giocares and, and Gordon because it, it just clearly didn't work for them today. Potentially, they're going to get the wing-backs to carry them, carry it out more or potentially one of their centre-mids and, and, and maybe try and... Um, close the space between midfield and strikers because that was another area today where 
the I mean Jokeres and Cotton were just isolated a lot of the time, so you know potentially they're they're, they're going to be looking to bring it out a little bit and and then play it and and kind of build up that way with with more men behind the ball. Matt, would you make any changes? Um, obviously, Force was back as well as Fry. We've already discussed Fry. We would keep McNair in that team. But what about Force? Would you would you put him back in that side? Um, it's difficult because I kind of see Jones as more of an impact player. Um, a bit like when he and Dyke still <clears throat> came off the bench. I can't remember what home game it was now. Of, it was when we had quite a few. Was it Norwich when they come, both come off the bench? Um, oh my God, I'm, my memory is terrible. It was Hull, wasn't it? Was it might have been Hull. Um, So I kind of see Azaya as more of an impact player. Um, But I think in this scenario, like we saw, he got him behind quite a few times. Down that right-hand side in the first half, I think his decision-making could have been a bit better. I think um, think there was an instance first time around where he maybe took an extra touch, could have got shot off a bit early. So there's definitely, I think, um, I think there's definitely positives of having Azaya in from the start. Force gives you goals. That's the thing. So maybe... It's a case of if the game is getting into the second half, 60 minutes, whatever, and it's still nil-nil, Borough need a goal, then I think you bring Force on. So as much as I think in any other scenario, I might have Force starting and Azai coming on as an impact player to stretch the game, we might start by trying to get him behind them. And then if that doesn't work and we need a goal later on, that's maybe when you bring Marcus Force in. Plus, of course, he, he's just come back from injury. Obviously, he had a mm. great great 30 or so minutes, whatever it was, uh, to get himself up to speed. Would you put him in from the start? I don't know. I think I'd probably keep it as it was, um, as it was today. Because like I said, I've got a lot of confidence in that that starting eleven after today's performance. Yeah, I think I'd agree. Carrick said on Sky Sports after the game that there are a few players half fit. You'll probably put Marcus Force in that category of course he'll be rusty as will Fry himself as well so I'd I'd probably keep it the same but I'm very excited for this match I just hope that if we unfurl a banner please God can we put it the right way around (laughs) because I was creased when Sky Sports panned onto the commentary fans (laughs) and their their banner was upside down and then it was like sideways yeah Yeah. they tried to flip it and it just didn't work so Borough fans can we choreograph our little borough <laughs> banner a little bit better than that but yeah looking looking ahead to that how are you both feeling going into it Matt I'll, I'll stick with you obviously sold out stadium very delicately poised you're excited I'm very excited um I just keep thinking back to that Brentford game and mm. it was another similar fixture obviously borough I think I think we got into it we were leading one mix I think I'm a I got a late winner it was a late yeah. winner, wasn't it, at Brentford? It wasn't an it equaliser. Was, yeah. So slightly different circumstances, I guess. But yeah, Borough turned it on in that second leg. And I just have just visions of that happening again. Um, fingers crossed that'll be the case. But I think what I would like to see is I'd like to see the atmosphere at its absolute like most rock. I, I, I remember the, mm. the Tottenham game. And I mean, that was incredible. And there's been a few question marks about the atmosphere at times this season at home. Have we gotten used to winning? Are we just conditioned to seeing Borough play well? But I think, you know, I'm just looking forward to hopefully a really, really unbelievable atmosphere, getting right behind the team and hopefully playing the way we do it at home and, and blowing Coventry away. And it, hopefully it's not a nervous 1-0 or hopefully we just absolutely turn it up. 3 nil in the first half and we're all spending the second half just partying. So <laughs> I, I'm actually not nervous in the slightest. I'm really excited for, for Wednesday. Yeah, you were saying off air that it's a very different feeling going into that second game at yeah. home. Is it? Is it just Riverside under the lights just gives you that confidence? Because that's what it, it does to me. It just gives me that confidence. There's nothing like it. I'd, I, if if they'd swapped the the fixtures around and if today's match was a, a late evening and Borough's second leg, even if Borough's second leg was midday, I'd I just wouldn't feel the same. I'd probably be a bit nervous. As stupid as that sounds, there is something about. <laughs> Uh, late night games under the floodlights at the Riverside. Um, packed out crowd. Hopefully the atmosphere is great. So, yeah, it's weird how my my um, thoughts are and my feelings going into the two games are so different. But I honestly just have confidence and I'm excited. And, yeah, fingers crossed that's the way it goes and it's not one big, horrible anticlimax. 
Oh, well, Borough will make it difficult. Don't you worry about oh, that. I, know. I should know better. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Tom, well, I know you're shitting yourself, but <laughs> are you are you a little bit excited amongst that nerves? Come on, Tom. The anxiety. Well, I'm already on the pre-match pint to calm my nerves. So <laughs> <laughs> is that Amstel? No, that, uh, unfortunately, it's not. It's Stella, but. Um... <laughs> Won't even be conscious yeah, by Wednesday if you keep drinking them. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just going to be one a night just to calm the nerves. It's going to be a regular recurring something until Wednesday. But um, no, I'm, I am hopeful. Um, I am a bit excited for, for the game. I think it's just when, I, I don't know what has caused me to associate this, but like when there's sold out Riversides, I'm just like, oh, please don't disappoint us. In fact, I know what it was that's caused it. It was when we lost 2 0 to Cardiff in the FA Cup. That was uh, one of. <laughs> One of the worst games I've I've ever attended, but um, yeah, I just I remember everyone being sold out for that and being excited and best chance to win the FA Cup in years, yeah. and then you know Roger Johnson ends up scoring for Cardiff and then disappearing <laughs> afterwards. Like, but um, yeah, it's it's just gonna be a nervy one. I I, I think um, for me, I don't have the same feeling about this one as I did against Brentford. Um, you know, all them years ago, I, I think I went into that Brentford game thinking we're going to absolutely batter these. Even the the Villa playoff game to an extent, I was just like, ah, oh, well, might be able to like nick a one goal win. It's just like like I said, at, we at might have start, a shot on target <laughs> <laughs> at, at the start. Like I said at the start of the show, like because there's been nothing separating these teams all season, it's just and I, I, we need to see something different to what we have seen from Borough versus Coventry this season. Yeah, I'm just really excited, to be honest. I think we really need to make sure that the nerves don't play into the atmosphere. We need to make sure that it's raucous Riverside because the early stages of the game, I think, are going to be really, really important. If the fan base and everyone inside the Riverside is back in Borough, I really do think that that could play a part. It's such a big cliche, this whole 12th man thing. But I just do think that makes a, a huge, huge difference. And I'm really looking forward to it. I really hope that we can emulate that game against Brentford in 2015 in some way even if there's very small parallels because that was firstly just a fantastic game to watch and immerse yourself in and secondly a really really good atmosphere probably up until that Tottenham game last season in the cup was my favorite game that I've attended at home and the best atmosphere that I've heard at home as well so yeah it's I'm so so excited and I really really hope that this fantastic team can can get over the line and we could go to Wembley again um, but guys before we finish have we got any score predictions for the game Matt what's your crystal ball telling you um I think it'll be 2-0 Borough um I think we'll <clears throat> I think we'll get a goal first half and then as the game goes on maybe Coventry will have to come out get themselves level and they might leave a few gaps in behind for Borough to exploit. And that's where we get our second. I, I, I don't think it'll be a 3 0 like Brentford. Um, I don't think Coventry will be that open. But I do think if Borough get an early goal, Coventry will have to change tack, maybe maybe come out a bit. And then later on, we nick a second goal. And we're on our way to Wembley to play Sunderland. <laughs> don't. Because that is actually <laughs> going to happen, isn't it? Oh, Tom, God. what are you um... <laughs> I'm going one nil Borough just to to bookend this uh, four games against Coventry this season. Obviously started with a one nil, so I think it's going to end with a one nil as well. Mm, let's hope so. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with two one. Daryl Lenahan, Cameron Archer. There you go, Tom. There's your Daryl Lenahan goal. As Matt said, it's all set up for Wednesday night. It's destiny. But Tom, it, it very much is. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. It's as you were between Borough and Coventry at the halfway point. What all will be decided on Wednesday night. This has been the Borough Breakdown Podcast, and that was all your Borough Match Day chatter in a pod. Come on, Borough! <laughs> Sorry, I tended it like that. Of the Borough Breakdown.